Swing cash, I call her swing cash. Swing cash, I call her swing cash. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to She's Got Time. It's your girl, Swing Cash. Happy that you can join us. You know how I like to start it from the top every week. So blessed and honored to have you here with us. Now, this is episode 21. I'm getting excited because we're kind of getting up there, y'all. Uh, but I wanted to, first of all, start out by talking about the week that was. So this last past week was really, really exciting, y'all, for me. Uh, I was able to get on the road to meet and link up with some friends. At the same time, I was able to talk a little bit of business which is important because sometimes we go from meeting to meeting to meeting and really never get time to kind of decompress and break bread and talk to people that are not only like-minded but people to also challenge your thoughts so this past week I had a great time meeting up with some old friends and it was very interesting because uh, one of my girlfriends was literally kind of going through something very similar that I had gone through in my career. And we started just kind of sharing notes and it literally was like we were reading from the same playbook. And a lot of times women, you know, when we link up and we talk about things that happen with women and how we fight for equality, we tend to have some of the same similar stories. Well, this past week uh, was really refreshing for me because it wasn't only about the stories about what happened, it was the stories about what we did and the outcome that was after that. So I encourage all of you sometimes to maybe just kind of decompress a little bit, tap out of the work that you have going on and tap into some friends or other women, other groups that you're a part of and really start having those healthy thought um, thought tank kind of conversations because I did and I'm telling y'all I'm back I'm back here in New York City I'm refreshed ready to go for this week so that was a great time for me also um, I wanted to encourage you all especially all of my listeners to not be afraid right to not be afraid of the unknown because a lot of times whenever you make decisions in business and in life uh, that next pivot of yours is like man what's gonna happen where's the whether it's the whether it's money that's coming in whether it's the comfort level that's coming in whether it's the job security that's coming in you never really know um, sometimes and don't be afraid of the unknown because sometimes you're in that place where God needs you to be at because he's about to open up some doors and explore you to other things that he needs you to start either learning becoming a part of or being able to give you growth so that was, you know, my past week. Of course, y'all know I was traveling. I was on the road. And shout out to my kind of support team and everybody that not only helps me, but also is able to help me with my family, with my son. And it takes a village at times. But look, hey, ladies, you know how we do. Guys, you know how it is, too. We got to get it done. So this week, I'm super excited because we are going to have a guest on the show. And her name is Jamie Messler. Jamie is unbelievable. Uh, she is a woman that has been involved with sports and media for a couple of decades now, but her knowledge, her um, ability to have a vision and execute and to be a visionary uh, for not only women, but in the space of uh, representing athletes, talking about athletes, and building uh, a business. She's going to be here with us on She's Got Time, and I can't wait to speak to her so she can share all of her thoughts with you all. So check it out. All right, so I kind of teased for all of you that we had a special guest coming to the show, and I'm really excited to have her here. And Jamie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Jamie Messler, um, she's an entrepreneur, sports business exec, and she also uh, was behind kind of co-founding and launching the Players' Tribune. And so for those of you who don't know uh, about the Players' Tribune, uh, they have told some amazing stories, um, really came from an athlete first-person perspective. I love the fact that um, that vision was there, Jamie, and that you just kind of like dove right in and it was like, we're going to get this thing moving. Um, so just to start off, what kind of propelled you into this whole sports world? Because I know you you got your BA from Maryland. Um, you were a journalism major, journalism. Um, you graduated with your BA, like I said. But what kind of pivoted you to sports? Well, it's interesting. Growing up, I have a twin brother. Mm -hmm. And so I think the commonality that we had growing up was always sports, because that was like the thing that we would, you know, be able to do together. And so whether it was playing basketball, volleyball, games in particular, um, and so I think growing up playing, I also grew up in New York, so I was a big mm -hmm. Yankee fan, Knicks fan, Giants fan, um, and you just grow up loving sports. And I think as I started navigating and like going to college, 
I kept, I, I remember reading an article once about IMG, which is a big sports management company. And it just fascinated me. I never knew that there was, that there were careers in the sports world that had to, that, that had to do with like representing athletes. It was the first time I read about what an agent does. And because I went to school in Maryland, there were a couple of big agencies like Octagon and a few others in the area that I started just being aware of. And it just fascinated me. And it's so funny that you say that because a lot of times, and I, I tell young kids this all the time, because everyone just thinks, going to the NBA, going to the WNBA, I'm going to play Major League Baseball, and no one ever thinks, I'm going to be an owner, I'm going to run the company, I'm going to be the one making decisions, I'm going to be a CEO, I'm going to be an agent. There's so many different pathways, and for you, uh, almost two decades, you were able to be at Excel Sports, and can you just talk to us about, one, how that opportunity came about, and then two, what made you stay so long? Because a lot of times people have careers, and especially in sports, they're jumping and they're moving. Yeah. What, what really kept you there and, um, and got you into the representation field? Well, it's interesting, and you make such a good point. When, when I first started in the industry, there weren't a lot of jobs in sports. You know, I started to learn about a few, but there weren't that many. And you're so right, like people that are passionate and love sports, they're most likely not going to be a professional athlete. But there's a lot of jobs in sports now in every aspect, whether it's marketing, business, branding, agents. So in just in general, I think it's like a really great field to be in. It's still very coveted and hard to get into. Um, but when I first started, I, I was an assistant at IMG. Mm -hmm. And the person I worked for, his name is Jeff Schwartz. He represented Pete Sampras, Martina Hingis, and Marcelo Rios at the time. And within a year of us working together, he left. And I went with him. And literally, it was the year that Jerry Maguire came out. And I always say, I don't know, like, I always say, like, we had almost, like, parallel path, the same story, except for he didn't complete me. Or, like, you know, we went, the first day that we got to the new job that when, when we started, before right before we started Excel, someone sent me a goldfish in, in a, remember, in Jerry yeah, Maguire, and Jerry Maguire with, with me. me. Um, and so I think that's part of it. So part of my journey was that I started with someone and all of a sudden we were in this entrepreneurial starting a new company type of mode. So it was very exciting. It wasn't, you know, it felt like we were building something new, building something together. And we ended up building this company called Excel and started in like 2000, 2001. And I think because I started so young there, I and because we were a new company, I was able to wear every single hat because you were doing everything. We were doing everything. And at the time, so our first clients when we when we started Excel were five basketball players. Mm -hmm. It was Jason Kidd, Paul Pierce, Jerry Stackhouse, Tyson Chandler, and Lamar Odom. I kind of heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that was like, okay, right. so I'm getting into this new industry. We're building a new business. And they were all just starting in their careers. Right. We kind of all started together. Like, we were all very young. Not Jeff. Jeff was a little older. <laughs> um, and so it was a really great way to, like, learn that part of the business. And I think part of me staying as long as I did is because I helped start the company you know, I think when you represent athletes, and you know this, obviously mm -hmm. being a professional uh, professional athlete yourself, we're working with people, and it's mm -hmm. human beings. It didn't feel like a job. And so I couldn't imagine working with these these athletes and leaving. Like, I, I could I, I felt like I was difficult. Because relationship-based, a lot, when you form a relationship, it's almost like a family. And that's a great thing to work that working environment, but it's also a very difficult thing to walk away from. Correct. And I mean, one of the things that you said I think is so important is you were younger coming into this business, but at the same time, you had to wear many hats and learn different things. I sometimes get like the question asked, like, especially when I'm out there and doing speaking engagement where someone's like, I can do this and I'm so great at it, but they want me to do X, Y, and Z, and I just want to focus on this. And I say to them all the time, you're going to be better if you learn that other trait, if you learn that other thing at the company, because it makes you more valuable. Did you realize that as you were younger, or you just were like, I'm thrown into the fire, I'm going to just do everything? Well, no, I think it ends up becoming like a, a great thing and a blessing, but it's also a curse. So... For example, yes, I did realize that, but so what I feel like one of the things that helped get me to where I wanted to go to help be successful in that field was that 
I wanted to become indispensable. I felt like it was important as a young woman in sports that if I wasn't there one day, like I, it, everything was, in my mind, everything was going to burn down. Like I needed to be a part of everything. And if I felt like, because you had to prove yourself a little bit more as a female in the sports industry, I felt like I had to work extra hard so that I was the one doing everything. So like, yeah, it's, great because then you end up growing and I ended up building this company that I became the CMO of and I got so many great experiences. But when I really look back, you know, I gave up a lot to make sure that I was always the one that was doing everything. <laughs> Cause I felt like if I wasn't that, Oh, well, we don't need her for that then. Or, you know, like it was something so many people do that. And yeah. especially women, we're the first, I don't feel like guys do it as much as we do it. No. Where it's like, I have to do everything. I have to be, like you said, indispensable. So now that you're a little bit seasoned in the game, when you look back at that moment, what would you tell somebody else that maybe right now is sitting in the same position, running around all over, doing a million things? How do they continue to make the make it feel like they're indispensable, but also understand your worth and your value uh, within that space? Yeah, I think it's I think it's hard, but I think yeah, it, it's really important, and I think. First of all, no one's indispensable. So if you think that's what you're trying to be, mm -hmm. that's just not the case. So period, any anything, anyone can go on. They're going to be thinking about themselves. It's a business. Mm -hmm. And so giving up personal time or giving up any time of any sort of balance to do that is not healthy and it's not necessary. I think you have to just believe in yourself and also don't be afraid to ask. It doesn't make you look like you're not as... Um, your work ethic is going to be in question or that you're not as committed because you want to have time for yourself. Like that's not, that's just not the case. And I think, especially in this day and age, I think it's easier. I think people actually start from a yeah. place of balance and more younger that, generation. Yeah, that work-life balance, I feel we're talking about it more. Before it was like this taboo thing, let's not discuss it. You just go in, you just work, work, work. Where it's like, no, we need to understand that balance in life. And I think women are talking about it more. We Absolutely. sometimes keep everything buttoned up and don't even share. And I think now I feel like more women are willing to do that. Well, back then I was lucky if I, and again, lucky for myself, if I would take the time to go on vacation, now people are taking time for meditation. Like now people are like, <laughs> I love that. So right? from vacation to meditation. Medita it's true. Like now it's like mindfulness. And like, I just had a conversation with a, a seasoned sales exec, a male. Um, yesterday, and he was telling me how he meditates every day, and I'm like, geez, like if I was doing that in my 30s or like yeah. early, like that would have made me a lot more <laughs> at peace and balance for sure. Um, so it is, it's, you're right, like it's just much more in the conversation now where people understand the importance of taking care of ourselves, and it's not. You know, I think it's almost the opposite. Like it's so exciting for me as as now I'm more in the part of the business of building businesses. Right. When I bring on young talent, especially that have that work ethic, but also like appreciate the balance. Yes. Like that's exciting for me because you don't always see that ethic. Right. So let's let's hit another pivot. So we have the earlier part of your career and you're learning. You're you're giving your all. You're getting those life lessons. But then you're with this agent agency. You're with you become the CMO. Now it's time to pivot to building another company. What made you say, okay, I'm I'm here for like the vision of the Players Tribune. I'm gonna dig in, be on the ground floor, and build it up. Well, because I worked with athletes for so many years, I was on the ground floor and understood that the relationship between the athletes and the media was becoming very disparate. There was not a lot of trust. And I felt like, okay, I'm trying to brand, create brands for all these athletes, create opportunity. But if I can't, if they won't talk to the media, it's hard for me to elevate their profile. It felt like there was this constant struggle. And as kind of social media was becoming more, like athletes were using it more and more important to brands, et cetera, it felt like there was a real opportunity to give athletes a voice in a time when the trust wasn't there with media and know that anything that they said, there would be no risk of it being twisted. And working with someone like Derek Jeter, who lived in New York for 20 years and mastered the art of not saying anything to the media, um, but as a result, like a lot of people really didn't know that much about him. Mm -hmm. um, it just felt like the right time, like he and I just, really connected on this concept of creating a platform to empower athletes to have a voice. 
And the more we talked about it, it also became like more important for everyone to have a voice. Yeah, so and it was so interesting yeah. in, in this whole space and in this day and age is that when I talk and hear from other entrepreneurs, one of the things they always say is like, well, I have this great idea. And I always go back to the root of it. It's like, you can have a great idea, but where does it originate from? Uh, because a lot of times if you're feeling a void or you have a passion about something, you're most likely going to work and work at it and be committed to that instead of just going out and say, okay, I'm going to start another business. Now, there are some entrepreneurs that can go, if you're a franchise person, go franchise and move to the next and move to the next. But with something like this, like what did you learn about being an entrepreneur as far as um, how you have to build a company? Because Entrepreneurs also, you have to be able to go out and get money and be able to get investors. No, it's it's so true. I've learned so many lessons in the past four or five years. Um, with the Players' Tribune, it felt like the right time because, A, I was kind of ready to leave the agency. I'd been there, as you mentioned, for a really long time, um, and Derek was retiring. So when I knew that Derek was just as committed and connected to that idea, I started to go and talk to people that could potentially want to invest. And it was interesting because when it was just in the idea form, everyone would be like, so it sounds interesting, but like, so you're telling me you're going to build a company that's 100% reliant on athlete contribution. Good luck with that. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. Like, I represent athletes. I know there's a need. And so we ended up getting a strategic investor in Thomas Tull, who mm -hmm. at the time was the chairman of Legendary Entertainment, and he's a huge sports fan. And so he was just the right investor. He believed in the company and the concept. Um, and so the lesson there was like, especially when you have an idea and you want to now it's time to execute, having someone that's a strategic investor that understands what you're trying to build is really important. Okay, well you're going to have to just give me, give me an example of a strategic investor, what that means. Because a lot of times... People think, well, if you have money and you give it to me, then that's that's good. But what's a strategic investor? So a strategic investor is someone, so Thomas was strategic in that he was an innovative content disruptor in and of his own right. Like mm -hmm. he he understood the value of content. He was a sports enthusiast, but he had built this amazing company in legendary entertainment and he was doing storytelling in sports. He did the movie 42. Mm -hmm. Um, and so he understood, and I and I felt like he could help not only put money into the company and help us build this vision, but that he understood what it would take and make introductions and add credibility. Okay. Like yeah. not all money is created equal when you're starting to build a business. And what we learned as we grew, and it's, it was a good lesson, is that when you're building the company, it's always more helpful to have investors that know how that kind of company needs to be built and that can add value mm -hmm. by introducing you to people strategically like and can help on the um, on the growth of the company versus just putting in money and like waiting for the ROI. Mm -hmm. And for you, you go in, you're helping launch a player's team. As a woman that's sitting at the helm of not only this new venture, but um, of communication with athletes, investors, and everyone else. Um, what can you tell us that you learned um, about yourself during that whole time uh, that could help another young kind of CEO or woman that's coming up or would like to be in that position of power? I think what I learned is that I've, I've always been creative, um, but it's translating some of those creative ideas into businesses, it's the execution, right? And so I think believing in yourself is obviously it's very important and realizing your voice and using your voice is important because I feel like I had many ideas over the course of the years, but like having the courage to go out and build a business around it or get investors or get other people to believe in it. I did it with the Players' Tribune and I did it with the right person because Derek obviously is, right. it was an incredible partner. But I do think it's like having that belief and using your voice and and going for it, having that courage. Um, one of the things I loved about what you did at the Players Tribune was that there was it looked like a um, 
you were very intentional, I would say, about making sure that women got covered just as much as you were trying to cover the men for certain stories. Like I, I, remain, I remember for me, when it came to equality, um, when it came down to um, talking about whether it was um, racism or different issues in sports, mental health, I feel like telling those stories in a very authentic way you were able to do. Was that something intentional for you or is it just something that more so the athletes were coming and you realized it was a time, a place in time where you needed to make sure that they had a place to tell those stories authentically? Yeah, no, it was very intentional, um, but also really rewarding because you don't realize it until you do it. And so it was intentional, meaning I represented all these athletes for a long time and there were so many stories that I just don't think would have existed if we didn't have this platform. Because when you're talking about something a little more sensitive, it's much more risky to talk to a journalist and not know what the end product's going to be. Right. And so that was definitely a big part of the intention of starting the Players' Tribune, but then seeing people like Kevin Love talking about mental health and then seeing that mental health is a priority in the NBA that Adam Silver has made it one, that feels really rewarding because I feel like we had a part to play in that. Or when we, you know, we worked with you guys in the Liberty and when we were able to talk about some of the issues that women in sports face, like that it just, first of all, it was really educational for so many people that I don't think understood and still understand. I think having platforms where people can like talk about real issues and know that it's not, we're not talking about them to get a headline or a click allows you to really get to the root of those issues. And I think it's more important today than ever. And so think, it's rewarding. Do you think more brands, more companies um, need to invest in this space of having these, this dialogue, having these conversations, not only with their employees, but authentically how they're branding, marketing, promoting? Um, because we, there, there seems to be kind of um, this effort and this push by some brands, but some are a little reluctant to say, I don't know if I'm ready to play in that space, but I feel like our country kind of needs it. We're at that time where people want to see that. They want to see that diversity, they want to see the inclusion, they want to see that you care. Completely, and I think <laughs> what, the word you said before is the right one, it's authenticity. And I think if, if the companies and the people that are just always so, like they're paralyzed, it's like paralysis analysis, like mm -hmm. those are the ones that aren't going to connect to consumers in a way that you can if you're being transparent and authentic. Nike did an awesome job this year yes. of doing that. Um, you have to, you don't have to, to promote or talk about something that you don't legitimately have interest or care about, but I think the more you can be authentic, the more connection and relatable you're going to be to consumers. Right. So here I am, and I and I'm thinking about all right. Um, what's next? What's next for you? I read now you step down from the Players Tribune, and I and just kind of knowing a little bit that I know about you and the time that I've spent with you, I know there's a pivot. There's another pivot that's happening. What are your passion points right now? And I know we can't really dive into it. I want to make sure we get her back when she's got time, whenever she launches what's ever next. But what are your passion passion points and interests right now? Well, I think what the player shooting really showed me was that I love storytelling. And athletes in particular have so many dimensions. And what I think we accomplished with the player shooting is really bringing that humanity to athletes, not talking about X's and O's. And so right now, it's just a really interesting time with content. There's a lot of people interested in sports content and high-quality sports content. So I moved to L.A. a year ago, and I'm really focused on how do we elevate the storytelling and bring a cinematic approach to sports. Um, so I'm working with some, some people in the entertainment industry, and we're putting together some things that I'd love to come back and share. Yes, I can't wait. Um, but I'm excited. I have, a, I have a real passion for content and storytelling and doing it in diverse ways and high quality. Audio, I think, is an incredible um, mechanism for storytelling, and I'm, I'm super excited about it. Well, I'm super happy, happy to have you here. And before we leave, any advice you would give to our listeners and also let them know where they can follow or find you to, to hear about the announcement that I'm sure will be coming shortly. Yeah, I mean, the advice would just be to, like I said before, believe in yourself and go for it. Like, you only have one opportunity. And there's a lot of people that, especially women, like, this is a great time. There's a lot of people that want to invest and get behind women. And I think you should go go for it and make it happen. 
Yes, I love it. And social media platforms? Yeah, Jay Mustler, Twitter, Instagram. Yes. yes. So make sure you guys hit her up and you're following her. I know she has some exciting things that she's going to have happen, dropping a few gems along the way. And I appreciate you, Jamie, joining us on She's Got Time. Thank you so much. And of course, I have to thank Jamie for coming on the show and just sharing all the insights that she was able to share with you all. It is such a blessing for us to be able to have different guests and give you all a diversity of thought, um, of opinion, different women. And I know y'all probably saying, when are the guys going to come on? I'm trying to get my husband from behind over there and the camera and everywhere else and get him on this side. But we're going to get some, some men on She's Got Time. So if you have some questions about what you would want to ask the different guys that are coming on, or if you want to see some different people come on as far as women, shoot us an inbox. Give us a DM. Let us know what you're thinking. You can always find us. She's got time on all our social media platforms. So before we get out of here, we have to do our segment or take a seat, take a bow, level up, and straighten your crown. So this week's take a seat includes myself. I know some of y'all are like, what you mean it includes you, Swin? Yes, it includes me. It includes all of us. Yet again, this past week, we had another school shooting, another school shooting in Colorado. Now, my heart goes out to not only the Colorado community, because over the last how many years, they've had three shootings within, I think, a 20 mile radius of a town that's there. And I started asking myself as I was flying in on the plane, I started saying I was watching CNN and I started saying to myself, Am I becoming numb to the fact that school shootings are happening so randomly? And so my take a seat this week has to be to all of us as Americans, because we still have not stepped up to the plate and figured out how to solve this problem. And why I said I have to take a seat, too, because I asked myself this question. I'm going to ask you as well. Have you called your congressperson lately? Have you sent them an email? Have you left them a voicemail? Have you decided when you go out and vote, you're going to vote for somebody that's going to take action on this issue that is killing so many of our young people? I don't know where you stand, and I'm not saying we need to take everybody's guns away. That's not what I'm saying, because I do believe in the freedom of the Second Amendment right to defend yourself. But at the same time, I do believe that we can be better because the world has shown us you can be better when it comes to this issue of gun violence. And so all of us have to take a seat until we're willing to consistently press, press, press on our Congress people and everyone else to get something done, to pass legislation to make our kids safer, to make us safer. So I'm going to step up to the plate. And I'm asking all of you all to join me. And until we do that, we all have to take a seat on this one, y'all. Next, our take about, listen, I don't know if y'all saw Tyra Banks on the front of that Sports Illustrated, but baby, listen, Tyra Banks at 45, out here just, she straight slaying some of these little young girls. Some of these young girls out here ain't eating, they ain't drinking, they out here look like if you just go and blow on them, they're going to blow away. Tyra came out and said, I look, I'm embracing these curves, I'm embracing this body, and at 45, <laughs> Still got it. Man, let me tell you, she made me start looking at different parts of my body that my son messed up whenever he decided to enter this world being like, ah, I'm with you, Tyra. I'm going to get it back. That snap back has to be real. And it starts right in your mind, ladies. It doesn't matter what your age is. It matters the work that you put in and how good you feel on the inside and on the outside. So shout out to Tyra Banks and baby girl, you need to take a bow because you have, you have made me want to get out there and get back to my get back <laughs> if I can. And if I can't, I'm still going to be just as confident as you were just being on the front of Sports Illustrated at 45 looking not damn good. Congratulations, Tower Banks. And lastly, our level up and straighten your crown. This week, our level up and straighten your crown has to go to all of the young people that are out there that have been fighting, that have been using their platform, using their voice, to make sure that this next election process and everything that's coming underway, this Generation Z that we all talk about, this new generation, we talk about the millennials, but this new generation that's coming up and saying, no, we want our voices to be heard and this is what we need. I want y'all to continue to level up and straighten your crown because guess what? It doesn't matter what people consistently say to you that your voices can't be heard. Each and every one of us get one vote. And I love the way that you're mobilizing out there. I love the way that you're saying, no, this is our future, too. And we want to be a part of the conversation to level up and straighten your crown. And lastly, before we get out of here, 
We have to give y'all a positive note. But before I do that, I want to continue to encourage y'all to follow us on all our social media platforms to make sure y'all send me all of those emails because we do read them. Swingattime at gmail.com. Hit us up on our YouTube channel. You're subscribing. You're out there. You're liking. You're on uh, Instagram, Twitter, everything. We appreciate y'all. But what I appreciate most is I love when y'all send me these DMs because they're so inspiring even to me. So the one we got this week that I wanted to share with y'all, it had this. You had a purpose before anyone had an opinion, right? Before anyone had an opinion about who you were, you already had purpose for your life. So whether that's in business, whether that's in relationships, whether that's in, in life in general, with family, with killed children, with your, your husband, your wives, whatever, you had a purpose before anybody had an opinion. So don't be out here letting people's opinion of who you are, who they think you are, deter you from taking on the purpose that's laid upon your life. So continue to walk in your faith. Continue to walk in your purpose. Because that, my friend, when everything hits the fan and everything's going wrong, you always fall back on what's your foundation. Your purpose is in your foundation. And you just build it brick by brick after that. I appreciate y'all. As always, continue to follow us on all our social media platforms. Make sure you're spreading the word about She's Got Time. The girl loves you. And we will see you next time. Swing cash. I call her swing cash. Swing cash. I call her swing cash.